Welcome to Word and Outlook Writing Tools. I'm Trainer Laurie. What are writing tools? Well, if you're a writer, you're going to want to be able to be a faster, better writer. So I'm, first I'm going to show you some quick tricks. It's not officially called that, but it's the thesaurus, find and replace, autocorrect, and grammar settings. But then I'm going to get into something that is called quick parts and auto text. Here's a great tool. Most of us right click on a word to change the spelling error, but it, did you notice there's synonyms on there? And if you find a better word, you should always use a better word if you can. If there's one with a, a more of a nu nuance of what you're trying to say, use it. Simply choose the one that you like, click it, and it has replaced the bad word. However, if you don't see the one that you want here, you can click on thesaurus and you get a lot more options. Unfortunately, when you use the thesaurus, you actually have to right click on the word and then copy and paste it into your document. The next tool is find and replace and there's several places to find find and replace. Um, it's a little confusing in Word because for example uh, when you go to home editing and you click find it opens up this navigation pane uh, which is a little different from what we may be used to uh, with the dialog box. If you choose the replace option it does open the dialog box. If you choose the drop down, it will open the dialog box if you click Advanced Find. But that's a lot of searching, so let me show you a place that was always available. So whether you um, are on the Home tab or not, you will always see it. And that's in the bottom corner of the uh, screen. Between the page up and page down, there is a circle there. You click on that circle, and you have a lot of options in there for finding things, including the Advanced Find. The find doesn't look like it has a lot of options until you hit more. With more, you see lots of options, including match case, use wildcards. And you can see the wildcards up here. For example, the star, which means find any missing character. So that will find everything that starts with CA. Or the question mark, which means find one missing character. Also, under replace, uh, you can replace, as you probably know, you can find old and replace it with ageless. You can replace one instance or all of it. Or you can uh, change the formatting or special. I like special because, for example, if I'm harvesting information off the internet and uh, I grab something that has a lot of paragraph marks that I don't want, uh, or maybe tab characters or any other kind of character like that that I don't want, I can find them in here and then I can replace them. The next one we're going to look at is autocorrect. We've covered this in other classes, but it's very important. I love it. Uh, you'll find it under File Options, Proofing, under the Proofing tab, and Autocorrect Options. When you're in here, one of my favorite things, uh, my thumb has a tendency to always type in Tati when I really mean to write in to the. My uh, thumb hits that spacebar in the wrong place. This is my personal mistake that I do all the time. So I have fixed it by <laughs> saying replace Tati with to the. Now, I am not a better typist, but it thinks I'm a better typist, and Word makes me look like I'm a better typist, so that's why I like that. If you find one in here that you don't like, for example, um, ACN uh, automatically becomes CAN, but there is an ACN corporation, and if you want it to say ACN, you can delete it. So you find the one that you don't want and hit the delete. And you can also right-click on a word that is misspelled. Now you know that you can just change it based on the uh, dictionary that's um, built in, the, the correctly spelled words. But you can also go to autocorrect. Under file options, proofing, we also have the option for grammar settings. Now we can make some obvious uh, changes in our grammar here, but when you click settings, you have even more options. For example, do you put a comma before the last item in a list? Well, you can change all that. If you have your own preferences, you can change that. Punctuation required with quotes, spaces required between sentences. You can also scroll down and you'll see lots of style options as well. Now let me 
point out that there is no official English, there is no official grammar, there is strictly uh, grammar and style based on usage. So everybody has their own opinion on it. The thing is, is you need a style guide and this helps, at least uh, you can identify what decisions you want to make on style because the only important thing is that you are consistent. Now the exciting new thing tool that we have in 2010 is called Quick Parts. Uh, you'll find this under Insert, and Quick Parts is a part of something bigger called the Building Blocks. And uh, something smaller within Quick Parts is something called Auto Text. So there's um, a, a trio of, of new words that you may not be familiar with, but let me try to explain the differences. Uh, with Quick Parts, I can simply choose from the list of things that I've already selected as a Quick Part. Remember when we used to copy-paste? We'd go find an old document and copy the paragraph that we want out of it. We might have even called it a boilerplate, a boilerplate paragraph. Well, now we can store it in a place where we can always access it. So that's what Quick Parts is. So it would take three clicks, first to get into Insert, and then one to get to Quick Parts, and then finally to choose which one we want. But we also have the old standby tool, Auto Text, and some people have been able to successfully find it and use it uh, in the past, and others never could. <laughs> so you can find it's a lot easier now, but this is what you do. You start typing the name of the Auto Text selection, and you'll get this pop-up. And when you're in the middle of the pop-up, hit Enter, and it will automatically insert whatever the text was that you'd highlighted. So that's ex essentially how they're different. Uh, the bad news about auto text is that this, you get this annoying pop-up. What if I don't want that and I accidentally hit enter and now I've got eight pages of, of text that I didn't mean to insert? So that could be a drawback. And with quick parts, you have to have at least three clicks to access it. So that's a drawback as well. So they both have great benefits, but they both have drawbacks. So that's why you have options. Well, let's uh, decide which one we want to use and how we use them. Well, let's look at Quick Parts. Uh, so whether it's uh, Auto Text or Quick Parts, we need to select the text or object. It could be a picture or a logo. It doesn't have to be text, and it could be as much text as you want. It could be several pages, or it could be just one sentence. So we're going to select the uh, text first. You already have it written. Then we go into Insert Quick Parts, and at the bottom of the options is Save Selection to Quick Part Gallery. It says, what do you want to call it? It's a good idea to keep, make it very descriptive because if you need to delete it or edit it later, you'll know exactly what it's called. You'll be able to find it. Uh, so you give it a name and then click OK. Now it's in there. All you do is go to Insert Quick Parts and choose, oh, did I mention you could have a picture or a logo? Look at that. And it's very obvious which one it is. But I want this one. I click it and now it's in the data, in the, the document. Very easy to use, but it is three clicks. If you right click, you have even more options, so you don't have to insert it where your cursor is, but you could insert it somewhere else at the beginning, at the end of the document. Now for an auto text, we highlight the text again, we go to insert quick parts, but this time we choose auto text, but you have a flyout, so you click the flyout, and you can see all the auto texts that are built in. There's lots of them built in there, but we want to save the selection to the gallery. Again, you'll want to give it a descriptive name, and this name will be critical because that is how you access it. You have to know what it is. To accept the auto text, start typing the name of the auto text, L-O-N, and as I put in G, look, it automatically pops up. I hit enter, and it automatically inserts all five pages. Auto text and quick parts are all part of the building blocks organizer and if I want to see them to organize it some more I can click in here and you can see there's my long text that I created and it is auto text. It is saved in a different location than for example here I've got some headers and it's in a built-in location and then I scroll down some more and there's uh, tables, but there's two quick parts that I created earlier. So you can see, you'll find all of your quick parts, your auto text, all in the building block organizer. This is where you can insert a new one, you can delete one, or you can edit the properties or the name of one. Exactly the same way in Outlook. Uh, make sure you're in Mail, 
and then under insert quick parts you'll see your quick parts now one of the reasons I really like this in Outlook is this you can insert uh, hyperlinks unlike quick steps which is another great tool on the message tab uh, quick uh, parts will allow you to insert hyperlinks because I use it so much I don't want to have to click 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 to find it so I'm going to right click on the quick parts and add it to the quick access toolbar. When you do that, it changes no tool to a quick access tool right up here, right up on the top. Now I just click that and I can access it. So I don't have to click to go to insert and then click to try to find it. It's right there at my fingertips. It's a, a great way of making quick parts even more user friendly. That's all. Thank you and we'll see you next time.